Hi guys, I'm Shane Snipes and you're watching Sustainable 1000, 1000 interviews across 48 states in 250 days. It's been a phenomenal journey. I'm in Boston or Baston or Beantown as they love to call it. Uh, great place and I'm here at the University of Massachusetts, uh, UMass in Boston. So not just, there's a bunch of UMasses, as anyone who's familiar with New England is all about, but this is the UMass uh, that we're going to be talking about today, discussing some things with the Center for Rebuilding Sustainable Communities after disasters. Uh, I'm lucky enough to actually be sitting down with the founder of that center here in uh, Massachusetts, and our discussions are really going to revolve around sustainable development as well as we'll be talking about what ways people can work with disaster situations to make a sustainable choice when things are rebuilt, which is, I think, a really important piece of what we've been doing. And what, what I want folks to take away from this project is not just that sustainability is something that we can do in our daily lives, but we can address so many other aspects of our lives, too, and what happens to us uh, in these different places. So uh, without further ado, I want to welcome to the program my uh, esteemed guest, Dr. Awatona. Awatona. I, Awatona. I almost got it. That's fine. People in, in America like to say A, don't they? Yeah. Well, they, that's fine. <laughs> Awatona. Yeah. I should know better. I speak Swedish. I should go with just my European pronunciation of words. Uh, <laughs> I'd be in good shape. Thanks so much for being with me today. Absolute pleasure. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your journey, your exploration, and, and what took you to this place of exploring what sustainable communities really are about. What was the thing that you think brought you to this place where you started to explore that? Well, I am an architect by training. I, I trained as an architect and as an urban planner and practiced uh, architecture and I've also been an academic for a good part of my life now. I've done teaching, done some practice. Uh, done research and organized several conferences, uh, have experience through my academic work uh, in all the continents of the world, Africa, Asia, South America, uh, North America, uh, the Middle East, and so on. And what I've observed uh, all along is that the only way, in my view, that uh, our endeavors can be actually sustainable is when we pay due respect to the local capacity, the local resources, when we utilize local resources uh, to address whatever needs that we, we want to address. But so long as we import other ideas, import materials, um, then of course the solutions are always difficult uh, to sustain. Mm -hmm. So, in my view, sustainability must be rooted in, in the in the local. Sustainability is a very local issue. It sure. has to be rooted in the locality in which the, the problems we want to solve are resided. And and from your perspective, you know, looking at all the things that have happened with disasters yes. in America, and you lived in Katrina yes. right before Katrina happened, yes. uh, and you left a few months before must have gotten the message. So, <laughs> but in any case, you were there, you in the sense of knowing what these communities, how they lived, what they were, uh, and now to seeing them kind of decimated. What's it been like from an intellectual perspective and from a sustainability perspective to really understand a solution to that problem? Has there been one? Uh, it seems like it's still very piecemeal, what happened in Katrina. Uh, I go there, and I was there, in fact, and it seems like some things are moving along and some things are not. What's your take on that? Well, I, I think uh, Katrina, tsunami, uh, the earthquake, in the recent earthquake in Haiti, um, the, the, the difficulties we have with uh, trying to find um, a solution to, to, the, to the difficulties created by, by, by those disasters is that uh, actually twofold in my view. Uh, the first is that we are not involving the local people in decision making processes. Uh, people come from the outside, they are called experts, uh, they are called humanitarian agencies, and they bring external solutions to what is really a very local problem. Uh, and if you don't involve local people, 
in seeking answers to their local problems, clearly you're not going to get it right. So that, that's the first. Um, and a good example, for instance, is Haiti. I understand there are well uh, there are over 10,000 NGOs, non-governmental organizations in Haiti, and they barely, you know, tapping into the tremendous amount of indigenous local resources, intellectual, physical, um, and so on, which are there in Haiti. And, and the consequence of that, in my view, is that at the end of the day, whatever solutions these external agencies bring into Haiti may not be sustainable. Then the second dimension, in my view, <clears throat> is that we everywhere, you know, tend to approach the problems was either during or after disaster in a very piecemeal fashion. And we never approach this, we never have a very comprehensive holistic approach right. to the resolution of these problems. And why is that? Why do you think we approach things that way versus really seeing the big picture, which could make such a big difference in so many ways to what we do in this world of sustainability, and especially when it comes to disasters and situations like that? It would make sense that we would, of course, first thing, approach it as, as a big picture problem? Well, the, 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 there, are, there are many difficulties in approaching uh, these problems holistically. Uh -huh. uh, the first is that d different organizations, different non-governmental organizations, different multilateral agencies, they all have their own separate agenda. And when they come in, especially in the case of an emergency, they are focused on making their own contributions in their own small area of concern. Uh, and again, unfortunately, there's always hardly any communication between these various agencies. So, for instance, the, again, going back to Haiti. of effort uh, and for sometimes mismanagement and corruption as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's just a very convenient way to do things, that you are in your own small cubicle, your own small silo, and you address the problems the way you see them, rather than engaging in a very meaningful dialogue with other people. Right. Well, I, I want to bring to a couple things to the foreground that, yes. that I hear and what you're saying that kind of make me think about my own work and the way people like to make uh, sustainability about yes. a set of steps. Four, five, ten steps. Voila! You're sustainable. Yes. And do you think we as human beings are okay with an ongoing process of change? I think, again, that, that the whole issue of, of sustainability uh, cannot be measured in, in a very simplistic manner. And it cannot just be uh, prescribed steps and then you are there. Uh, it, it is multifaceted, it is multi-layered and extremely complex indeed. It involves social issues, cultural issues, economic dimensions, physical, uh, philosophical, uh, and so on. So. There, there, are, there has to be a comprehensive plan if you are going to a approach the problems, especially post-disaster reconstruction in a very holistic manner. Um, and, and it's an also an ongoing process. A, it's an so ongoing it's two process. things happening at the same time. Yes. One has to have a lot of structure. Yes. And a lot of detail and, and knowing exactly what to do next and next. And then when do you let go and say, uh, uh, now this is up to you, or do you? No, no, you don't. It's an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. It's an ongoing process all the time because it has to do with changing circumstances as well. You know, changing physical circumstances, changing economic circumstances, uh, changing climatic conditions. So you, you have to be at it all the time. Mm -hmm. Well, but then you end up hiring folks, right? So you'll hire someone to be yes. the director of sustainability or sustainable transportation. Right? Yes. But what happens when you evolve beyond sustainable transportation? Or what happens when the structure of the organization that the director of sustainability put together works so well that they put themselves out of work? Are people ready to give up 
because it that feels yeah. like to me as I've had these discussions of sustainability now yes. for a while, yes. it feels like to me that's that's what we're asking people to do. We're asking people to be ready to change, and uh, it, I don't think that's something people are hardwired to know to want. You know, you're absolutely correct. There was a study that was done some years ago uh, about people's perception of sustainability. And it transpired that everybody was for sustainability so long as it was not themselves who had to make the sacrifice. <laughs> exactly. So long as it's their, it's their neighbor, then it's all well and good. <laughs>